Hey, Rangers fans. Have you joined the Rangers Network? If not, now's the time. It's easy and free to subscribe. Get your phones out. Text the word Rangers to 42828 to stay in touch with all the latest Rangers news. Want that again? Text the word Rangers to 42828. Go Rangers! Atkins, with pressure coming after him, throws it to the corner. He's Martinez got got has it. it. Touchdown. Josh Atkins, his fifth touchdown pass of the night for Martinez, his third touchdown reception of the night. And the Rangers are on the board for the first time in the second half and lead it 36 to nothing. Welcome to Inside Rangers Football. I'm your host, Brian Freeman, alongside me, Smith Valley head coach, Larry Hill. The Rangers are on a two-game winning streak now. Smith Valley with an impressive 37 to nothing win over Wagner. This past Friday, now moving into a tie for third place in the 27-6A district. Coach, uh, you never know how your team's going to respond coming off of the bye week, and then you have to factor in that Wagner is also coming off of a bye. How are they going to come out and play? Uh, but your team looked like they picked up with the left off in the week, week before and the win over East Central. Uh, what did you take away from the game on Friday? Well, I thought our players handled the bye week, as you mentioned very well. Uh, you know, it's always a little uh, nerve-wracking coming out because you've been off a week, and Meanwhile, you kind of turn it over in your mind. What kind of things have they concocted in their extra week? What are we fixing to see different than what mm -hmm. we anticipate? And uh, so, uh, but we handled it well. Got the big kick in game play to start the game and scored first. And, uh, uh, you know, we were plus three in turnovers and uh, played well in the kicking game. Had some explosive throws in particular. And so we did the things we had to do to win. Uh, weren't always overwhelmingly uh, spectacular in everything we did, but Wagner has a lot to do with that. So all in all, we were pleased. I want to talk more about those throws you just referred to in the passing game. You had 222 yards passing from Josh Adkins and only 10 completions, half of those going for touchdowns. Of those five, three of them to Edwin Martinez. What's the relationship between explosive plays and confidence in an offense? Well, you need big chunk plays. You know, it's very difficult, particularly with the schedule we play against the caliber of people that we have to go against every week. It's very difficult to string together 10, 12, 13 play drives over and over and over. You're just playing people that are too good. And uh, while you may get a few of those or your fair share of those, you're going to have to have some big chunk plays. And when you get them, you mentioned confidence. Suddenly that seems to breed confidence that, you're, that you can do some more. And uh, then that begins to mix with your ability to drive the ball. And, hopefully make you a little more complete offense. So it was good to get some of those last Friday night. Well, speaking of confidence, your defense is playing with a lot of that right now. Over the past eight quarters, you're now only given up, given up six points after Friday's shutout win. And even the six points in that eight quarter span came in, for lack of a better term, garbage time against East Central. As you look at the play of the defense from this past Friday, what impressed you? Well, I think limiting their explosives. We just mentioned uh, our offensive explosions that we were able to get. Uh, you know, they had come in, made a living on the long run and a few long passes, and uh, we, we limited those. I think they had three uh, runs over 12, and that's mm -hmm. a, a, an explosive by our definition. And so to limit them to three explosives, make them drive the ball, and see if they can put together the 12, 14 play drive. And, you know, last Friday night we were able to keep that from happening. You mentioned confidence. I think our defense right now is playing with confidence, which comes at a good time when you look at uh, some of the folks who are next. One note on defense, Jaden Deaton moves out of your backfield to linebacker from this past Friday. What went into the decision to move him to defense? Well, Jaden's a really fine football player, and uh, good football players can play lots of places. And, uh, you know, wherever you put him, we're going to be good because of it. And, uh, of course, linebacker's his home port, where he came from. So mm -hmm. he grew up in our system. And, uh, uh, you know, we kind of looking at the parts, what's the best way to arrange these puzzle pieces. He fits in anywhere you want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but uh, we felt like it was best for us to, to make that move, and uh, we did. He, Jaden, being the team guy that he is, you know, his response was what I thought it would be. Coach, what do we need to do to win? If that's what you need me to go, then that's, that's where I'll go. And uh, he played well and will continue to play well and get better as he gets comfortable in returning to, a, to, returning to the linebacker position. You open things up by talking to me about the opening kickoff to, uh, you know, to start the game off, a 75-yard return by Trevon Merrick Woodard to open the game. You also blocked another kick uh, right. from this past Friday. So special teams continues to thrive here in the 2016 season. 
When you get plays like that on special teams, how much easier does it make the job of both the offense and the defense? Well, you know, you start talking about field position. You know, when you're only driving 20 yards, only have to potentially drive 20 yards for a touchdown, as we did after that long return, you know, your odds of scoring a touchdown go way up. Mm -hmm. uh, and likewise, if your kick coverage is good or your punt team is good and you pin them back inside their 20 or 10 yard line, they've got to go 80 or 90. Well. You know, again, you're, you've helped your defense. Those are hidden yards. It's not talked about much, uh, you know, in, by the outside world. But most of that favorable or unfavorable field position is created by the kicking game. So we spend a lot of time on it, and uh, it's been a strength of ours. Hopefully it will be moving forward. Well, again, the Rangers look good. Offense, defense, special teams, special teams from this past Friday. So now at this time, let's take a look at some of those big plays in the Rangers' win over Wagner. Let's take a look. Our first big play is the opening kickoff of the game. It kind of highlights our special teams, in this case our kickoff return team. Ball's kicked deep to Trayvon Merrick Woodard, our junior kick returner. And just initially you see two blocks near, at or near the hash mark to get him to the return spot. As he gets there, you get a couple of kick out blocks toward their sideline. Another block there inside the hash, kind of creating an alley there. And then as he uh, busts through the alley, we get one final block on the kicker which allows him to go and finally run him, uh, run him down about the 20-yard line there and uh, gives great field position. Our offense is able to go in and score uh, after that, you know, after the, uh, on the opening drive and put us ahead 7-0. From the end zone, you can see it from a little bit different uh, vantage point. Uh, as he comes up the field between the hash and the numbers, you see we've got blocks in towards the hash, other blocks outside towards the sideline, and Trayvon hits the gap right there. And, of course, he's got a lot of speed and talent outrun some guys. The last guy right there, we kind of trip him up and we get it on the 20-yard line as we mentioned. Our next big play is an offensive play. We're going to feature a junior wide receiver Edwin Martinez out here on the numbers. You can see he's faced with nose-to-nose -to -nose man press coverage. Wagner's playing eight guys on or near the line of scrimmage, kind of daring us to throw. As the play unfolds, you watch Edwin goes up, out, and back in and makes a fake on the cornerback and frees himself up for the first uh, touchdown pass of the game right there. Good throw by Josh, great protection, just a great individual move by Eddie Martinez. You see it from the rear, see a little bit more of the uh, how many guys they've got on or near the line of scrimmage. You know, we've got eight check marks there. Uh, they're going to bring about seven of them, but we're able to uh, get a uh, hat for a hat. In other words, we're going to block each and every one of them, give Josh time to squeeze it off. You see Eddie coming in the screen there on the right side. Ball's perfectly thrown, he catches it in stride and gets it in the end zone. Our last uh, big play is a defensive play. This is a read sweep by Wagner there. You can see they're running back, coming wide, running the sweep to their left, our right, and then the quarterback is running up inside. He's trying to read the intentions of number six, senior defensive end Colt Fuller. If you watch it, it goes pretty fast. Colt will take one threat and immediately Brandon Arnold takes the other threat and throws him for a loss. Colt with that tackle, Brandon on the quarterback, both slung to the ground. Don't really know who has the ball, but we're going to tackle them both and uh, sort it out later. See it a little bit differently here from the uh, rear. There's Colt on the right in defensive end stance. Brandon's already in his stance on the left. The play unfolds with the read sweep. Colt takes that threat. Brandon's kind of hidden in there, but you can see him throwing the quarterback for a loss. And those are our plays of the week. All right, Coach. Well, now we're coming up with a break here at Inside Rangers Football. Up next, it's our weekly senior moments. And coming up in just a bit, we're going to preview Friday's upcoming game against Clemens. At Inside Rangers Football, we're back in just a moment. It was a dark and spooky night. It was third and ten, and the Rangers had the ball. When all of a sudden, they had a false start penalty. Ah! Ah, what in the world are you all scared about? Coach Hill's just gonna call a play action pass, drop the linebackers, hit the receiver on a shallow post, strike up the band. Rangers, Rangers, the best! Join Coach Hill and Brant Freeman each week on Inside Rangers Football. Log on to rangersnetwork.com to never miss an episode. The Rangers defense had their backs to the goal line. It seemed like all hope was lost. Coach will blitz them and knock them out of field goal range. 
I'm Dr. Matt Bayless, your Smithson Valley Dentist. We are proud to be located right here in the Spring Branch Bulverde community. On Highway 46, between Ranger Stadium and Highway 281, you'll find Summer Hill Dental. Dental care with advanced technology, we specialize in family, cosmetic, and implant dentistry. Come see us at Summer Hill Dental, your Smithson Valley dentist. Hey, Rangers fans, have you joined the Rangers Network? If not, now's the time. It's easy and free to subscribe. Get your phones out. Text the word Rangers to 42828 to stay in touch with all the latest Rangers news. Want that again? Text the word Rangers to 42828. Go Rangers! Welcome back to Inside Rangers Football. Now we turn things over to Emily Wick, who has this week's Senior Moment. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Brant. Hey, guys, you know what I'm going to ask you to do. Yes, Text your moms. moms. That's right. <laughs> Text your moms. All right, so I'm here with Cole, Dylan, and Chris. Cole, I have a question for you. Sure. If sponges didn't grow in the ocean, would the ocean actually be deeper? I don't know. Good question. It would, no, it would be less deep because then there would be less sponges, so then the water would go down because there'd be... Honestly, I just thought about that. That was a deep on. answer. Yeah. That was a deep answer. <laughs> Serving up all types of knowledge today. Dylan. Yes, what is the longest amount of days you've gone without taking a shower? You know, I'm a very clean person, so I'd probably say like a day. That's <laughs> I don't good. Know. I don't Your really, mom will be happy to hear really that. I don't really enjoy smelling like I haven't showered. Yeah. Your mom will be proud. I doubt it. My mom would be proud. Chris? Yeah. If you were going to get in a fight, would you rather get in a fight with one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? I ask people that every day. <laughs> I'd honestly <laughs> fight 100 duck-sized horses. Horses They'd be easy to beat. You know, a horse-sized duck like would probably bite your head off <laughs> with that big bill. <laughs> I'm serious. That's a, That's a lot of little horses running at you. It is, but you know, what are they going to do? <laughs> bite you with their little mouths? I mean, they're small. <laughs> just kick them off. I mean, they just got like them hooves, though, you know? Kick, they yeah, could, they like, could just, yeah, like, not gonna just do stampede anything. over you. <laughs> yeah, crowd surf on them. <laughs> crowd surf. <laughs> Speaking of ducks, I have a joke for you. What did the duck say after he bought lipstick? What? What? What did he say? Put it on my bill. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what did that? See, they all watched it last year. You hear that? Okay, here we go. <laughs> what time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? I don't know. What time is it when an elephant sits on a fence? It's time to get a new fence. Ta da! <laughs> It would definitely be time to get a new fence. <laughs> Boom. Okay, guys, I have a challenge for you. I would like you to work as a group and draw Coach Shen for me. Yes, you know, right. Right, right. Get it. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, all right. Get a little bit. bubble. Get the little, little bubble up. All right, all right. He's got to have some hair. Let the man live a little bit. Sure. <laughs> Draw um, some sunglasses. Wait, on. what are we gonna? Oh, you gotta give him some sunglasses. Draw his neck. Give him glasses. Draw his neck. Um, <laughs> draw his. Here. I'll draw the. I'll draw the body, guys. <laughs> no, just draw the, the words. He did the hair. I can't draw, draw the words. Why did somebody take the cat? Yeah. Show the camera y'all's artwork. It says attitude reflects performance <laughs> because that's what Coach Shin says. I heard y'all talking as you were drawing about. A, a noise Coach Shin makes? Oh, no. What what noise Chris, is you got that? This. I don't. I feel like you can. Do I, it. I don't. I don't even. I feel like it's I, just. I, I, I don't. I don't know. Do it. All right. I, you brought it up. You have to. How do could it. you? Yeah, do you that did noise bring it up. Though. You have it's to like, do. Meow. <laughs> I don't know. What? Do that again. Like, what? It's something like that, right? No. <laughs> what are you talking? Okay, then you tell me the. Noise. I don't know what noise you're even referring yeah, to. Yeah, I don't either. I really don't. Is there even a... He made up... It's a made up noise. All right, I made up the noise. <laughs> okay, guys. I have a little competition for you. 
I'm pretty competitive. And so I want to see who exactly can levitate their ball the longest. On your mark, oh, okay. get set, go. <laughs> oh, look at Chris's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little too hard. <laughs> okay. I think it's gone. It's awesome. gone. It's gone. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I wasn't Good even, job, guys. Not gonna lie. A little lightheaded. <laughs> I'm a little lightheaded. Right. Coach, I'm winded. Good job. <laughs> I want to see how well you remember your nursery rhymes. There was an old woman who lived in a... Shoe. Score. It was a shoe. Really? really? Okay, I didn't know. Now, See, I, knew, I didn't what, know what the next line was, but I knew that what, word. What kind of shoe do you think the old woman lived in? It was a raft suit. I'm gonna go with that. Yeah. Good with so that? Going yeah. with she food. lived in an Adidas shoe. Yeah, a raft oh. Simmons that he did. Okay, there you go. <laughs> So, CJ, he's number 11. Should his number actually be 11, or should it be called 1D1? <clears throat> because it's a one, and then it's 22, you know? But 1D1. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I like it. I don't know. I'm I like 1D1. Right? I'm Let's fan. change his number, 1D1. 1D1? 1D1. 1D1. It's hard to say, though. Yeah, I mean, like, come on, one e one. Like it shows how good doing that. Let's go. I don't know about that. <laughs> I like it. It's a thought. There you go. All right, thanks, guys. Brant, coach, back to you. Go Rangers! Oh, all right. Thanks, Emily. So Emily, Emily was visiting with some of the big guys here on the team. So that seems like an opportune time now to kick things over to the Little Men segment. Nice segue there. Coach, let's go, let's go check out Little Men in the cover four defense. Let's watch Coach Obrick as he presents. Today's Little Men segment uh, centers on defensive football. Uh, oftentimes, the casual fan may wonder, how does a player know where to go? You know, how does he know if it's going to be a run, if it's going to be a pass? How do I know to defend this area or that area? Most defensive positions have something called keys. They read their keys. Every position has a different set of keys. Today, Coach Doug Ulbrich, who's been here going on 23 years now, is going to talk to us about safety keys and cover what we call cover four. If they're in cover four, how does the safety know whether to come up and play the run, drop and play the pass, and which angle to take? So Coach Ulbrich's going to go to the little men, kind of show us just a basic premise of how cover four works. So Coach, take over. All right. In cover four, our safeties key the number two receiver, which is the inside receiver on their side of the field, such as this safety will be looking at the tight end who's inside, and this safety would be looking at the wide receiver who is inside. Those are our keys. If they are blocking, we will run downhill to make tackles. If they are going out for passes, we will cover them. That's the premise of cover four. Let's go to some game tape and show three examples of cover four in action. Here's three examples of cover four in our regional quarterfinal game uh, last year. Uh, this is some examples of cover four. You can see our two safeties. What are they looking at here, Coach Obert? They're reading their keys, which is the number two receiver or the inside receiver. And as we move it forward, you can see that the tight end is number two receiver blocked. So that's the safety's key, as we said, that this is a running play. So now I'm going to fit out here where the arrow shows, makes a tackle. Good play by that young man. Here's another example in the same ball game. Same formation. They're still reading number two. What's he seeing this time, Coach? He's going to see a pass on this one, and he's going to break on the football as soon as he sees it thrown. Force the ball to the outside. He and the cornerback combine for a tackle. They actually lose one yard. Same formation, same game, different set of keys this time. You're going to see down the field passing, and we will cover up the inside receivers as we have on the last play. So it's not a run or a short pass. This time it's a deep pass, and so our safety, who's circled, is going to cover that receiver on the deep route. And you'll see he does a great job of it as the play unfolds in the end zone. Great tight coverage, forces the ball to be overthrown, and goes incomplete. 
That's cover four in action. Well coached players by Coach Obert, well played in the game by our players. Thanks, Coach, for being on. And now let's go to Ranger Trivia. This week in Rangers Trivia, last year's game between Smith Valley and Clemens saw the two teams combine for 113 points, a record four combined points in a Ranger football game. Prior to that offensive explosion, the record was 106 points in a game played in 2007. Who was the Rangers opponent that night? Is the answer A, Johnson, B, Madison, or C, Roosevelt? The answer is C, Roosevelt. The Rangers had their highest scoring output ever against the Rough Riders in that 2007 game, posting a 72-34 win on the road in district play. Yeah, that was a wild game back in 2007 when Smithson Valley took on Roosevelt then. High scoring affair. He played a high scoring football game against these Buffaloes last year, Coach. And you've been a part of some, of, uh, some crazy games. Well, I like the Roosevelt high-scoring game more than I like the Clemens high-scoring game. One, we managed to lose by one, as you mentioned, or as we mentioned, and the uh, Roosevelt game was kind of odd. But, yeah, 72 points back in the day against a real quality football team. That was surprising. And we won, mm -hmm. so it was a good thing. Well, Smithson Valley going for some payback against Clemens. It's coming Friday. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to preview that game coming up this Friday in shirts on Inside Rangers Football. We're back in just a moment. This November, vote for a man who knows how to be an American in America for Americans. Vote for Coach Hill for President of the United States. He's not afraid of anything. And then, the ninjas come out of the forest. Ninjas? Who wouldn't vote for a president who had ninjas in their video? But I don't want to be the president. But you're from Texas, Coach, and that makes you a shoo-in. I'll make sure to put that in the video. But it doesn't matter, because I don't want... I know! We should get John Wayne to be in your video! John Wayne? I can hear it now. The new president of the United States of America is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I just have to say that if I was president, I couldn't coach football anymore. Well then, I'm officially resigning as your campaign manager and Vice President. <laughs> okay then. Coach, how tall do you think you have to be to run for President? This political ad was paid for by Wick Productions. Watching a video is just better than reading stuff. Carpooling with Coach. You're up early to coach those Rangers, and we're up early to make great smiles. What a great idea. I agree. You guys do the driving. Gives me a little time to watch some game film. You mind if we play a little bit of music this morning? What time should we be here to pick you up? About the time the Rangers wore red. Welcome back to Inside Rangers Football. Coming up this Friday, Smith Valley takes on the Clemens Buffaloes, one of just two teams left in 27-6A play that has yet to suffer a, suffer a district loss. They're 3-0 in the district, and, they, and they've won five straight games overall. Coast only loss coming to Round Rock a team you're obviously familiar with having played them in non-district play as well. It looks like Clemens has picked up where the Buffaloes left off from a year ago. What do you make of this team you're going to play on Friday? Well, they're very similar in outlook and a lot of their personnel is similar. Uh, you know, the, obviously the quarterback gets a lot of notoriety, a lot of headlines for good reason. He's been able to generate big plays, running the ball, throwing the ball uh, really for three years. and. Uh, he is uh, what makes them go, there's no doubt. But they've got playmakers at running back and receiver. Their offensive line plays well. They probably don't get enough credit because uh, 
he gets a, a lot of uh, accolades mm -hmm. and defensively very big and strong up front very difficult to run the football against and uh, there's a reason they're five and one and ranked as high as they are and there's a reason they're right in the middle of the district race so we'll have our hands full Friday night. Uh, Coach you talked about Frank Harris the quarterback for Clemens and I also alluded to the fact that he is a three-year starter and uh, you know you've played some dual threat quarterbacks this season, but not all dual th dual threat quarterbacks are created equally. What makes him especially difficult to face and prepare for? Well, you know his ability to play both within the structure of the play and then outside the structure of the play. You know they they have a very well designed plan that allows him to operate, and he, he executes it very very well. When and if the play breaks down or you know something goes awry, he's able to create, make people miss, and still not only make maybe move the chains, but maybe go 70, 80 yards for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. So uh, just defending the play right itself doesn't always get it done. You've got to defend the play correctly, and then you've got to close the deal by making tackles, and it's probably going to take two or three guys coming from different angles. It's one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, the odds are against you. You look at the defense so far for Clemens in six games. They've allowed their opponents to score 13 points or less four times. That includes a shutout from earlier this season as well. And this past Friday in a 52-13 win over Canyon, they forced five turnovers. Right. What are you seeing from Clemens from that side of the ball? Well, I think they're just, you know, really solid and stout at every position. There's not really an area you can say, well, let's exploit here or let's throw at every play or, hey, we can run over here. There's not that, nothing, nothing glaring that's there. And they got good players at every position, uh, big and strong inside. Uh, their defensive ends are very, very athletic and you know, very difficult time getting on the edge and then play their cornerbacks tight to the line, try to take away your short throws. So, uh, you know, I don't think there's really one thing we can do. We're going to have to be good at everything and, and mix our looks some and, and uh, find a way to move the football. Every game is important for you. You know, you look at this district game coming up, it's, it's another opportunity for you to uh, inch closer towards a playoff spot. Speaking of the playoffs, though, you know, given the fact that two of you played in such a competitive game last year, Clemens is who they are right now, do you get the sense we're going to have a playoff-like atmosphere at the game on Friday? My guess is it will be. You know, uh, two schools are close proximity-wise, so both crowds, uh, you know, our, our crowd will travel well. They're at home. They always have a big crowd. There is a, there is a lot at stake, as you mentioned. Uh, both teams are highly ranked, so... Uh, and coming off a game a year ago that was, you know, if you didn't care who won, it was probably as exciting a game as you'll want to see. Mm -hmm. So uh, my, my guess is it'll have the feel of a November-December game. And, Coach, finally, what other keys can you break down for us that might factor into the game on Friday? Well, you know, we mentioned explosives against Wagner. You know, we prevented theirs, and we had a number of them. We're going to have to do that again. That's easier said than done on a team that thrives on explosives offensively. Uh, and we're going to have to uh, find some ways to create short fields through turnovers. And uh, they haven't turned it over much, but we're going to have to try to take care of the ball ourselves and create some. Well, the Rangers and Buffaloes aren't the only two teams playing a district game this week. There are six other teams in action, three other games taking place. So for more on those games in this week's district picks, here's Dr. Ferris and Dr. Hembry. Thanks, guys. I'm Tyler Ferris. And I'm Megan Hembry. And we are Ferris Orthodontics. And these are your Week 8 Picks of the Week. Line them up. Okay, my week eight pick of the week. Judson, Wagner, Rockets, Thunderbirds. Uh, not really a home game for anybody. Mutual field, mutual ground. This is clearly all Judson, no doubt about it. Tough year continues for Wagner. There you have it. My week eight picks are between the East Central Hornets versus the New Braunfels Magical Unicorns. Man, those unicorns still have their magic, and I think those East Central Hornets have lost their stink. So I'm going to go with New Braunfels on this one. All right, without further ado, your Week 8 Game of the Week, Smithson Valley Rangers, Clemens Buffaloes. I think it's pretty clear here. Uh, I think it's pretty clear here, too. <laughs> go Rangers. We got you on this one. Back to y'all. So to recap, Dr. Ferris, Dr. Hambry, they like the Rockets, they like the Unicorns, and of course, they like the Rangers. Well, I like the last pick. I don't know about the first two. We'll see how that goes, but I hope they're spot on on that last pick. Nothing against the other three games, by the way, happening to the district this Friday, but, you know, Clemens and Smithson Valley, Shirts, that's where you want to be to watch your district game. Looking forward to this one, Coach. Yeah, me too. It should be a great night for high school football. Again, Smithson Valley taking on Clemens this Friday at 730. We'll have live coverage of the game available on rangersnetwork.com with Rangers Radio at 715. 
And of course, the televised replay will, will first be available at 6 p.m. this coming Sunday at Max's Roadhouse and later available on the website rangersnetwork.com. Don't forget, for updates on everything Smithson Valley, text the word Rangers to the number 42828. We hope to see you in shirts this Friday. For Coach Hill, I'm Brain Freeman. Thanks for watching, and we'll tune in with you again next week.